What's up guys, my name is Mimo Swine here, and I'm bringing you GBA Season 6, Week 10 Pick'em Crew. Um, it's been a long season, it's been a tough season to pick the matches, um, it's not over, every week gets harder and harder to call. Yeah, absolutely, it is very frustrating for us analysts here, but at the same time very interesting, so hope you guys are enjoying uh, making the picks every week, because uh, we definitely are, we enjoy your participation. Yeah, uh, last week was uh, fairly fairly overall. Uh, Canto Cast Blue didn't do very well, but uh, everyone else uh, picked the matches pretty pretty well. This is true. Moving on to the first match, we have the Atlanta Haluchas versus the Pittsburgh Piratitas, and uh, team matchup played a big uh, role in deciding on who most of us picked to win this match and who I ultimately decided to lock in this match. Um, also, uh, Fizz has kind of has lost two games in a row, and I don't see him losing a third. Uh, Tup just kind of came off of a fairly big loss, but um, he I feel like he'll bounce back, but not against Fizz this week. Yeah, I agree, because Fizz, when do we ever really see him lose multiple times in a row? Very rarely, if ever, and three games in a row, that is pretty crazy. And he also has things like Volcanion that just click buttons against Tup's team, and then Mega Scizor, which could really run through a week in Tup. So... I think that overall he's got a matchup advantage, but Tup does have some really nice things like Sand offense that could definitely uh, run through a weakened Holucha team. So could definitely go either way, and Tup's been playing well all season, so really don't know. Yeah, and one of the Pokemon that's really going to put in work, uh, other than Volcanion, is going to be the Mega Scizor for uh, uh, Fizz this week. Uh, defensively, has a pretty good matchup and can actually end up sweeping Tup if he's not too careful. Yeah, that, that is also true. So moving on to the next game here, we have the New York Metapods versus the San Francisco Arcaniners. And here I actually locked George, even though he came up with a really rough, rough loss. But one of the reasons I did is because last week, George was not himself. Tom played very well, no doubt about it. But George did not prep as well as usual, and he certainly did not play nearly as well as usual. He was actually making not just like mispredictions, just like silly plays that uh, definitely were not reminiscent of George's older games. So... Because of that, I think that George is really going to step it up this week, and he probably also really wants some nice revenge on Dan for beating him in the championship last year, so he's probably going to be coming out guns blazing, whereas Dan could always surprise everybody, so you can ne never really count him out of a match, but on the same token, I really just think George um, has more momentum throughout the rest of the season and really is going to want this win after uh, a poor showing last week. I think this is going to be the best match of the week. This, uh, uh, I, I think this is going to be the best match this week. It might even be one of the best matches this season. Yeah, uh, it definitely could be if, if Dan makes those crazy plays like he did last time. So the reason I'm picking Dan this week is uh, solely from a picker's standpoint. Um, if I want to win this thing, I'm going to have to go ahead and pick against some other coaches. Um, I felt like a lot of coaches would pick George, and uh, I decided to pick Dan this week. Yeah. That is actually a pretty interesting strategy. Actually, one that I use for the next one coming up. Yeah, you want to go ahead and jump into that yeah, one? Go. The Boston Red Sox versus the San Jose Sharpedos. I actually went with Tom this week. A few other people did, but um, overall, I think Nick would be the favorite in this game. But one of the reasons I decided to go with Tom is because uh, both Tom and Nick got big upset wins last week, and Nick was... A, a little saltier towards us analysts than uh, Tom was. Tom was a little more respectful about his, um, you know, approach on busting on us analysts. So because of that, even though I mentioned how I could easily see Nick beating MV with uh, his pretty good team matchup and the fact that they had a really close first game, um, you know, he still went ahead and trashed all his analysts. So because of that, I am just going to go with Tom because he's been playing very well lately and he's definitely stepping it up. And even though he did trash us as well, he was much more respectful about it. And I, I respect that. I appreciate that. So uh, San Jose Sharpedos it is this week. And yeah, maybe we'll get a nice uh, upset win there. Yeah, Nick gets internet for the first time in a, in a long while and thinks he runs the place. And that's not really how it works, Nick. you got to work your way up to running the place. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, uh, Tom played really well. He impressed me last week. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get the job done against Nick because I feel like Nick has a has a really, really good team matchup overall. 
Um, if he takes out that Mega Aerodactyl and uh, uh, just just the Mega Aerodactyl, really, uh, Mega Venusaur puts in a lot of work. Yeah, that is a, that's actually a really good point. Mega Venusaur could definitely go right through a, a lot of Tom's team 1v1. Yeah, and that's why it's one of my favorite Megas in the entire format and one of my favorite Pokemon. So Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good point. So, moving on to the next game, we have the Bo Rush Adon fan versus the New, or- New Orleans Pelippers. And I think this could be the toughest match to call of the week. Definitely one of them. Uh, you have Lars, who's a bit of a spark plug and can definitely turn it on in a match. Whereas, uh, you have John, who's one of the most consistent players in the league. But John has not been having his greatest season this, this year. So, I don't know if he's going to be able to beat the huge threat that is Lars. But I like his matchup a little bit. Um, Mega Lopunny really runs through the Don fans fast and offensive team, whereas things like Bisharp could also uh, easily sweep uh, an unprepared or just a weakened uh, Don fan team. And overall, I think that John is just a little bit more consistent than Lars is. And I'm going to go with the consistency here because that is something that I I like and something that um, has gotten me at least to be one of the higher pickers uh, this season. So hopefully that will carry over for this game here because it's a very tough one to call in either Coach could definitely take it, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I agree with you on this one. Um, Lars has kind of been all over the map this season. He's gotten big wins against Envy, and he's lost some uh, matches to teams he probably shouldn't have because he had a better team matchup, and we felt like he would have prepped better or played better than he did, but he didn't. And uh, Lars has kind of had a disappointing season for me so far. Um, John's kind of lost a few games that he probably shouldn't have as well due to due to hacks and other things, but he still put himself in positions to lose like that. And uh, if you do, then you might you might suffer the consequences. And John suffered a lot of those consequences this year. And uh, I feel like he's learned from that um, overall. And down the stretch, I think he's really been playing a lot better. He's been making not only safer plays, but just smarter plays, like predicting when he should predict or double switching when he should double switch. But um, definitely things we haven't seen him do in previous seasons or earlier in the season. I definitely think he's kind of getting back into a little bit of a rhythm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think he is getting back into a rhythm. And if that could carry over to this game, I, I would definitely think that John could, could pull it out this week. Yep, definitely. Moving on to the next match, we have the Philadelphia Scissors versus the Utah Jasmine. Uh, we have a coach that's kind of trending downward versus a coach who's the team to beat in the league right now. Uh, the hottest coach in the league, the Philadelphia Scissors, and uh, it's really, really coming out with this fire in the rain team. It's kind of weird. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, uh, he's he's been winning a lot of his uh, most recent matches and team matchups that he probably should not have, or that really did not favor him um, at all, honestly. Um, he played better, he prepped better, and he got wins, um, which is why I think you would have to be insane to pick against... Uh, Chimpact this week. Um, I know Cooper's good, and he could bust out a set that you have no idea like what it is, like, oh crap, Mecha Gallade gets Hypnosis, or things like that, that could really catch uh, Chimpact off guard, because he's. I know he's kind of used to more standard things. Um, and Coop, if, if there's one word that defines Cooper, Coop, it's definitely not standard. So <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, this Yeah, this is definitely going to be tough for Chimpact, because even though he's definitely on a really hot streak, uh, he looks great right now because he is just coming out week in and week out, outplaying his opponents, and he's really getting the hang of his prep. So with his uh, preparation skills constantly increasing, I think that he's probably the guy to beat right at the moment. But the thing is, his draft, I still don't think, is the best. I think it could definitely improve if he could even make more transactions at this point in the season. And um, like you said, Cooper is the furthest thing from standard. So Chimp has been, um, you know... I guess preparing for more standard preparation for the most part, just because most of the people he's been playing don't really use the crazy wild sets that Cooper does. So he could definitely get thrown off by some of Cooper's sets and uh, team choices. So with that being said, you'd never know what Cooper could do to possibly win this game. But at the same time, it's just really tough to pick against Chimpak right now. So this is why I'm just going to have to stick with him here. Yeah, yeah uh, I agree. And just to let everyone know, I'm not a dummy. The definitely not uh, standard was meant to happen because if I said it was one word, 
And I said three words. You know what that is? That's not standard. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, wow, you really were thinking steps ahead there. I was, I really was. <laughs> and, uh, speaking of uh, thinking steps ahead, we have the uh, Newcastle United versus the Milwaukee Sawsbugs. And uh, I think uh, Battler actually really been fooling us the whole time. He's actually a god and the best player in the league. But he's just kind of like masking it and uh, saying that he really isn't and hasn't really been performing uh, like he should. Yeah, yeah, I I I know what you mean. Like, um, every now and then he comes out and really just plays so well. But the thing with Battler X that I I'm not exactly sure if he if he is deep down a god is because like he'll play really well like at certain points of a match and then just kind of like blow it and make a mistake. So. Either he's doing that on purpose to lull his opponents into a false security, or, you know, maybe he just has his shining moments and then just kind of rides the high wave and then forgets about certain things that are definitely important to remember. So because of that, I'm probably going to go with um, Castle this week just because I like his team matchup uh, against the Saws Bucks. And I feel like he's overall been a little bit more consistent this season, but at the same time, they both have been playing better. They've both been in a little bit more of a groove. Uh, at this point in the season, so I definitely wouldn't be too surprised to see X give it to uh, the Mew Castle. But hey, who knows? Uh, it's always nice to see Battler X get a win because he's usually considered the underdog. So, however this match pans out, I wouldn't be too surprised, or you know, I'd be fine either way. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch Battler X play. Um, it's a lot more fun to actually watch Battler X win. Uh, he doesn't do that often, but when he does, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, he really kind of kind of goes all out and uh, with his video and makes it really entertaining. So, Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So moving on to the next battle, we have the San Diego Chim Chargers versus the Tampa Bay Lux Rays, coached by uh, MV and Manitoui, respectively. So this game is very difficult to call because even though MV has definitely been one of, if not the toughest coach this season, Manitoui is... Really, really good as well. Had a really big win last week. And he he could win against anybody. And if he could see through MV's uh, building, then I'm sure he could find a way to beat MV's teams. But at the same time, even though MV does have certain patterns that he seems like he likes to follow, the sets that he brings are so good at catching people off guard that there's always a good chance that MV could find a way to just completely throw his opponent off and just sweep them with a crazy set. Or just use his generally good knowledge of the game and, and high skill level to outplay his opponents. So, with that being said, I'm going to have to stick with Envy, even though I definitely think that Monatui could be one of the guys who could beat Envy this season. But who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see because this one I'm definitely excited to watch. Yeah, I do not believe this should have been the fan lock of the week. Um, kind of just riding the, the wave of Envy. Uh, throughout the season, because I mean, you would you would kind of have to be crazy to pick against Envy because he isn't showing any reason to really not pick um, against him. But uh, Monadoui has been playing well; he's been prepping well, and I feel like if you just get a little bit of momentum on Envy, he kind of struggles to gain it back with the, the style that his teams are. They're kind of they're much more offensive, and if you kind of have the upper hand and you're just kind of playing around him a little bit, then. He kind of he kind of falls back, and he's kind of hard to, for, kind of hard for him to get back into the match. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Yeah, because one of the thing, things he hasn't really had to do and hasn't shown this season is that he could come back in a match. I feel like most of his matches he was kind of always up, and if he wasn't up, then he lost. So yeah, that, that's actually a that's a very good point, and you know I think that. All right, well, it looks like uh, I cannot hear Maddie anymore, so I'm actually going to go ahead and finish out the video for uh, the rest of uh, the Pick'em crew. So next match we have is the Riyama Real versus the San Francisco Giantes. Um, Miguel has been playing very well, but Gio, he started off hot, and then he kind of went into a phase where he didn't really play um, all that well, kind of hit a wall, and uh, his team prep kind of kind of fell off a little bit and his team wasn't performing the way that he thought it would so um, I think that G Gio likes to be the underdog right so um, Gio I think is the underdog in this match and one of the things that's really helped him kind of turn his season around I believe is making the trade for Manaphy and Latias while it's not like 
on paper is not a good trade for Geo. Um, he kind of loses a lot that his team kind of had, like that Manaphy really added to his team, but it fits his play better. Um, Latias is much better for the way that Geo plays, and I think he kind of he kind of showed that in the last match against Tup. Um, he played well, he prepped well, and he got a, a bit a win. What probably should have been a bigger margin of of victory than it actually was. Um, on the other hand, like Miguel has really dominated the competition of the GBA his entire career, but this season he's faced a little bit more adversity. Um, he's never he's never lost to Geo before, but I feel like this is the week where it's going to happen. Um, he's not that big of a of a favorite, but he still is a favorite, and it's going to be it's going to be a really tough match for uh, Miguel to win because I do think that. Uh, Geo has a little bit better of a team matchup overall. So, with all that said, uh, me and Maddie are going to wish you, everyone uh, a safe, safe weekend and uh, goodbye for the video because uh, we have to go. It's late, and this is our third time recording it. So, uh, uh, keep voting in the fan polls. They usually go up uh, mid afternoon on the East Coast in uh, anywhere Tuesday, Wednesday, or maybe even Thursday sometimes. Uh, just depends on. Um, when we record and when we get all the picks in. So uh, see you guys later. Uh, hope you guys have a uh, wonderful week and a happy picking. See ya.